What's going on YouTube? It's Mr. Ferguson here once again. Thank you guys for coming back for another video here at the Project Lawn. And I also wanna to try to start to begin to shout out the members of this channel. They're a big part of supporting it uh, with just a little bit extra with their, uh, their membership. So shout out to the Super Freaks. Shout out to the Lawn Freaks. Thank you guys, you a uh, few right now, and hopefully that will grow over time. But thank you guys for your memberships. Thank you for supporting. We're trying to build that up and it's hard. We're kind of at a stalemate right now. So if you're interested, check out the join button down below and become a member if you can. Jumping into it guys, we got a great video for you today. We're gonna talk about the soil test for the church. We talked about it. We're gonna recap real fast. I'm gonna shut up and show you the lawn. Uh, because right now it really don't look good um, even though we got GCI cool blue down we've talked about it in previous videos but I want to recap everybody let's get on the same page show you why it looks like it does and also what we're gonna do today and what we're gonna do in a few weeks to fix and correct what we're seeing let's talk about it right now so we've talked about this several times in past videos but if you've missed it You'll notice that uh, we've got GCI Cool Blue uh, in a around 3,200 to 3,500 square foot area here by the preschool. And so we've got shadows here, but what you'll notice is that number one, it looks pretty good up here up top. It's kind of a darker color. If I just stay still and let you just look, this is the natural picture, right? It's dark over here, but over here on the left, it's super light. And so as we go down here, I'll kind of show you more. You can tell um, it's the same thing over here, right? On our bank over here, on the side, it's really dark, but over here towards the middle, it's lime green, and uh, it's continued to look like that. We've been watering it. We've put down, uh, in the beginning, in September, we did protein starter fertilizer, which is, I believe it's like a 1622 something, um, somewhere around there, but uh, 1626, something like that. So uh, nitrogen, phosphorus, and a little bit of K as well. Uh, that's supposed to be a 90 day formula. So um, it works really well to uh, feed the grass when you're doing brand new seed, right? You guys know this. Well, all of a sudden, after we applied some 2000 from GCI Turf, we started noticing a little lime color and now it looks like some more of it's getting a little lime. And I'm like, man, what in the world? And so without walking over here, we'll show you that here in a minute. I'm like, something's not right. So we ordered a soil test up here for the church and we got that. I did several areas. We took different plugs from different parts of the soil, sent it off on the soil test. And so I've got that back. And so what I said before I show you the soil test, here's what my guess was. Number one, every time I've done the nitrogen spray, which was really just once, we did a spray of green effect and we did a spray of 2000 GCI turf nitrogen, straight liquid. I noticed that I would have a backpack sprayer full, well not full, but I noticed that I would almost not only walk quickly and cover everything in this section, but I'd have a lot left over and I would do it basically almost close to twice on the whole piece of property with grass here and around the backside over here. So I'm like, oh no, I've put down way too much nitrogen and turned it a lime color. That's theory number one that I had. Theory number two is what's our pH? We haven't done a soil test. We sent away for a soil test a long time ago before we ever got to this point and we didn't get it back because of some confusion with the, the company and sending it off. We lost the tracking number, everything. We just don't know what happened. So they sent me a new test and we just got those results back. So I want to show you the results. Let's look at it. All right, so with everybody on the same page, that's the troubleshooting that we need to look at. And the way that we need to go about it is a soil test. So if you're having issues similar to this, the best thing, if you're like, man, I'm liming up too, what the heck? I think somebody else said that in one of the comments. So here we go. I'm gonna throw up the soil test over here. I wish I could do it piece by piece, but here it is. This is probably the worst soil test I've ever seen in my life. And I'm a DIYer, right? I'm only doing soil test at my house, but here you go. Number one, our nitrogen is actually not even in the optimal level. So immediately going from left to right, we didn't overdo the nitrogen. So that's great to see that I thought, I didn't think I overdid the nitrogen. I've done protein and then on top of that sprayed a little more extra nitrogen. So I didn't think I overdid it. And the soil test shows, as you see here, 
that um, we are even below optimal for nitrogen. Go all the way to the far right, guys, and look at the pH. We're at 5.45, and I believe that that is part of our issue right there. That's one of the main issues is our pH at being 5.45. You see the grass, it came up, it looked awesome, but all of a sudden it's showing signs of it doesn't look right. It, it, it's growing, it's, it's there, but it's not looking right. 5.45 pH is too low. We need to get that up by 0.5. We need to get at least up to six. We're gonna talk about that, how we do that here in a second. Going back over, look at our phosphorus, guys, the second number. Um, it is almost barely optimal, and the only reason I believe that exists is because of the protein starter for it that we put down. So uh, when you actually zoom into the number there, 0.54, and we need to be a four. We're at 0.5. Um, so we got a long ways to go with phosphorus. Um, our K, not that bad, surprisingly. We're at 28 and we need to be at 30. So that's not bad. Our K is actually there. Our calcium's low. We've talked about that. I increased that in my lawn because calcium helps build the cell wall of the plant. We're a little low on that. I think we got something we, 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 can, we can definitely do that. But the main three that we want to look at is N, P, and K. We know nitrogen drives the bus for growth and everything. We're not too far. Nitrogen ain't a problem. But my phosphorus, that is total opposite of my lawn. I've never seen phosphorus that low. So that's what we want to focus on and then you got what is it, uh, magnesium and manganese yeah I think magnesium is the first one it's good sulfur is really high our sodium is really high our iron's really high and so what that tells me is the water probably from the well it's just naturally high in iron uh, we did do green effect maybe that affected it a little bit but I'm thinking the soil plus the well water is just high in iron and sodium and sulfur on its own and then the rest you got your micronutrients which we really aren't focused on on this test um, and again I'm a DIYer I'm not an expert at, at, at breaking down soil tests but what I see from this as a DIYer and doing this for a few years now is that number one, I got to get my pH up. Number two, I've got to get my phosphorus up because the, the soil test is, once again, the cheat sheet of what's going on behind me. So let's go look at what we're going to do today to work on this soil test. And uh, let's also look at, or actually, I'll just explain to you what we're going to do in the future. But let's see what are the corrective steps we need to do for this soil test. So as you see, once again, we got darker grass up here, lime green up here. I believe that is pH related, guys. So that's the first thing we're going to hit. It's the first thing I can do because luckily, as I showed you guys at my dad's house, he had two bags of lime. So we're going to put limestone immediately down. And you see, hey, we want to get it way up. Easily neutralize your soil's acidity for perfectly balanced pH. That's exactly what we need. So we've got two 40-pound bags. What I've done, I brought Mr. Elite spreader he's very elite um, and two 40 pound bags of limestone right here so we're going to throw you on the tripod we're going to quickly spread this what i did is i actually typed in a limestone calculator um, and based off clemson university popped up i clicked on their link and you can type in how much uh what your ph is what your ph is desired to be and it roughly at the bottom it gave me a rough estimate based on the soil depth of i guess what we want the ph to be be as deep as we want it to be the deeper you go the more lime you need the the higher or the the less shallower you go the less lime you need but roughly for around six inches it was saying do around i believe 20 um 20 per thousand 20 pounds of lime per thousand square feet so that's going to really help with our that's going to you know and then we're going to water it in that's what we're going to do today so we're going to take all of this lime throw it down and again the deeper it, it absorbs into the soil the uh the, the higher it's going to raise up our ph into the appropriate levels the the joy of this is we need to do another soil test later on but we're limited in our time and our window before uh, frozen ground and cold temps set in. You're, you're, we're on a clock, right? So depending on your location, you may need to do this right now. You need to get that soil test, send it off, see if you're in the same boat I'm in, 
and act on that soil test immediately while you got time. The further north you are, probably the less time you have. So let's get on the tripod. Let's spread all this lime. The good thing is you can't really mess up lime. We're going to just spread it all out the best we can all over the place heavily and get the water going and talk about the next steps that my dad actually has already sent me the email, the next steps we're going to do to continue to work on this lawn. All right, guys, so uh, obviously, if you're brand new to lawn care, if we don't water in the granular product that we just threw down, it's just gonna sit on top of the ground. It does us no good unless we water it in. So it may take patience, may take some money out if you're on city water like me to uh, give up some of your water to get that in, but we need that in the soil just yesterday, right? Because we've grown this grass, now, what can we learn from this? The, the previous soil test I did that we lost would have probably prevented this because what we would have done is the day we threw down our cool blue, we would have automatically thrown down lime. This could have been prevented. However, I love when I get a bad soil test, especially up here at the church, because it shows you guys that number one, I'm a DIYer and not everything is perfect and I run into problems just like Pete, just like everybody else, just like you do. And so if you've got low pH, we're gonna do another soil test later on. Now, if we can get it in before winter, that would be awesome. We'll see if the church wants to buy that, but we've got to water it in. So set the sprinkler out, get it watered in. Every single inch of this grass needs to be watered now because it's covered with lime pellets, granulized pelletized lime. So we need to soak that in. So the other thing I I've noticed is I've not cut this for a week. At my house with the urea, it's growing like every three days I can mow um, and I'm cutting it at three inches. I'm also cutting this at three inches, but it doesn't even look that long. So what I'm learning and observing and coming out here for the first time and really paying attention to this project lawn in a, in a few days since uh, it's, it's, de it's a week since my mom's birthday when we was out here and I showed you the last mow. I mowed it last Friday, one week, and it doesn't need to be cut. Um, so it's slow to grow. Definitely it's growing better in certain areas. And I think that goes back to the dark color versus the limey color. The limey color is obviously the lower pH areas. Maybe it's a little bit higher pH in the darker areas. And so it's growing there. It's able to uptake all the nutrients there better. That's what I perceive. That's what it looks like because against the fence on the bank, it's really low. Over here against in the shadow it's low and we've still got our spots over here we've reseeded so watering it in. So now I'm going to stand to the side while we're watering and I've got a few minutes let's talk about the other parts. We're handling the pH and we can always go up the street and buy a bag of lime and throw it down if, our, if we don't like where our pH is after we test it again and water this in we can go up right and so you can never really 
probably throw down too much lime. I, I guess that's stupid. If you got a truckload, yeah, okay. But you can't really mess up your lawn with lime. If you got a low pH, we probably could use two more bags. But this should get us up, hopefully, hopefully, around a 6, 6.1, maybe. I don't know. If it's higher, I'd be fine. If it's got up to 6.5, I'd be great. I think that's what I set it as, is a 6.4 on the calculator. And it was saying around 22, 23 pounds per thousand. So uh, roughly, this should be close to where we want our pH to be, but we can always get another bag of lime. So what about nitrogen? Well, that's an easy one, right? We can put down more 2100 um, from GCI turf liquid. We could just burn that in. Not too concerned about it. It's not growing fast. Don't really want it to grow fast. The cooler weather has slowed it down probably a little bit. Well, we are going to hit 70s, so nitrogen's not a concern. We'll get that, but the main second concern is what we said earlier, phosphorus. And so I had my dad go ahead and order some green pop and to go ahead and get us some 0020 something. I don't have my other phone on me right now, but it's the GCI product that's straight up potassium. So we're gonna hit it and we don't really need, that bottle may get us in the optimal. I would imagine it's possible our potassium will be in the optimal level after using that full gallon on this turf. Um, but the nitrogen, once we apply some of the green pop, it's got some, I think it's 16, I don't have it again in front of me again, 16, 20 something, uh, we need phosphorus, we need phosphorus. And phosphorus is huge, why? Because the, the middle number in that bag of fert is for root development, pushing the roots. We're super high in my lawn, we are almost nothing in this lawn. We need phosphorus, and again, I believe that is definitely contributing to the color and to the way this GCI turf just don't look like the GCI cool blue that it can be. And so this soil test is key. So I hope you've enjoyed this one. I'm gonna to continue to water each and every section out here, get the pelletized lime, it watered in. We're going to get these applications in and we'll show you, we'll kind of recap and show you the applications of getting our phosphorus up and adding more nitrogen in the future as well. God bless you. I hope this has been a good one. I think it's been an awesome video. I wish I could do videos like this all the time, but we're in a unique situation where I really feel like this can help some of you experiencing the same problems in your new lawn or in your overseeding. God bless you. We'll see you on the next one.